Hey guys, so here I'm going to show you how to create a um, lattice deformer, and we're going to create a cluster system to be able to control it. Now we're just going to keep things pretty simple. We'll just have a sphere here, and we're going to uh, bind him with a simple one joint. In other areas, you might have it a little more complicated, but I'm just going to keep it real simple for now. Enter, there's our joint. Let's go and uh, put him a little bit more towards the middle. It's fine. Um, grab my sphere. I'm going to go to my bind skin binds uh, skin smooth skin open up properties for a second interactive never use post because it sucks I'll do five in this case it doesn't really matter so much but all depends on your character sometimes in characters I'll do three but the census is fear will do five I will hit bind skin all the other settings are fine so now we have a simple sphere here that's uh, bound to an object but say we want to get a little extra movement out of this guy. We want to get a little, maybe a little jiggle that we can control. Not using the jiggle deformer, and I'll make a video of that later on, but actually being able to control the movement with a controller itself. So what we're going to use is we're going to use a thing called the lattice tool. Let me get a good amount of vertices in here real quick. Let me actually do it from the sides. It's a little bit cleaner. We'll grab that much. And with this selected, I'm going to hit my space bar, go to Create Deformers, I'm going to go to Lattice and open up my options. Let me talk a little bit about how this works here. So the Lattice, and I've talked about this in other videos when it comes to um, modeling, but here we'll talk about it concerning animation. These are our divisions. It works as height, width, and depth. Not only can we use it for modeling, but we can use it, it's mainly used, or it was first created for animation. So it's great that we can do it with modeling, but now let's talk about what it's originally used for. We have three um, divisions here for height, width, and depth. And we have local divisions here. This is the strength of how much those points that aren't selected on the lattice are pulling on the ones, um, the ones that are that are selected. The main points, how much they're pulling on the ones that aren't selected. Sorry about that. So it's a local division, basically how you how it uh, controls the strength. And again, on height, width, and depth. And you can play with these, and I'll I'll show you later on um, with these settings later. So I'm gonna hit create. Let's go and change our uh, divisions a little bit more with the channel control. I'm going to set this to like, I don't know, we'll do four, four and four, and I can just shift select and plus four, but I'm being uh, kind of lazy. Um, is it lazy or is it just too hot to move around? Yes, California is quite hot today. All right, so we got this here and uh, we have the points. So let's go and grab some of these lattice points real quick. Enough with the heat jokes. I don't want to rub it in your face too much. For those that don't live here, we're going to grab these vertice points here, and I'm going to go in here and go to create deformers, and I'm going to go to my clusters. So when you make a cluster that allows you to control a series of points in here, and I just did a few on the top. If I wanted, I could go a little bit higher on that. So we'll just go a little, or grab a little more, grab some of these guys, create deformers, and again go to cluster. And this gives us a nice little control of the animation. We can move things around if you want. So using clusters, it's pretty cool. So it's up to you. You can make several different clusters. We can make a cluster set here and a cluster set over here. But the main reason we're making these is because if you, you can keyframe these points, but you never want your animator to have to go in here and constantly select them to animate because it's a pain in the butt. And what if they want to remember where their last position was? So it's a little bit difficult. So we're going to go in here and again, we'll go to create deformers. I'll just do the top this time. Create clusters. It creates a little C. And you also don't want your animator to have to select that because it shrinks as you get closer. Don't ask me what the logic is about that. But as you get closer, it goes farther away and a little bit harder to select. So what we're going to do is create a curve to control this guy. I'm going to move him up above my system. I'm going to go in here and freeze his transforms. And just to be clean, we'll just say delete by type history on him, only him, not the sphere, or you will destroy your rig. If you ever delete history in a model that already has a joint bound to it, only use non-deformer history. Make sure I make that point. So we're going to delete history on this controller because he's not bound to anything. He's just going to be in, control, in charge of something. Delete history. We'll call this uh, cluster control, CNTRL01. And we're going to now parent constraint. Now remember, parent constraint is the opposite of regular hard parenting. We're going to grab the parent first, then the child. And the reason why it's set up that way, oops, control Z. And the reason why it's set up that way is so that you don't get confused when it comes to your uh, 
parenting. I know you'll say, well, I'm confused anyway when they do it backwards. Well, they're simulating a child and parent relationship. So um, it just, believe it or not, it does make some sort of strange sense. So we grab the controller, shift select the cluster. We're going to go to constraints. We're going to go to parent constraint. We're going to turn on maintain offset. So my remembers both of these in 3D space. And we hit add. All right. So the cool thing about this now, we can move around and the animator can animate these pieces and he can zero it out when he's done or move it back to its original position. And you can make it for every single point. Now I just did it from the top, that's fine. So we're gonna make now a world controller for him. Keep my finger on the V key. And we'll also make like, you know, an animation control. Now the world control, I'm gonna do this because I wanna follow my own rule. This look puts a, an object in 3D space. And you always wanna have a world control. And you heard me say this in some of my other videos, one uh, about organizing your rig, because the world control allows you to replace the uh, item wherever you want. The animation control allows you to control the animation. You never wanna animate with your world control. You want no keys on it. Because the moment you start animating on your controller, everything underneath, and you have to say you have to move your whole object somewhere else, you're gonna have to counter animate all of that. And that's a pain in the butt. Nobody wants to do that. Hit control D, scroll this down. This will be our animation controller. Grab this point. I'll grab every other one. And I'll scale it in so we just know that's our animation control. It's a little bit different. Modify. Free transforms. N-E-C-N-T-R-L. And modify free transforms. Main C N T R L. And grab both these guys. Edit. Delete by type. Alright, so I know that's exciting. So what we need to do now is we actually need to make the bone and put it underneath this guy, or select the bone and put it underneath our animation control. And we need to select our cluster and put it underneath our animation control. So let's go, in, uh, or excuse me, our lattice. So we're gonna grab the lattice. Now if you grind, try and grab the lattice in 3D, there's a problem here. If I just grab this lattice and then shift select my controller and my bone, um, and put it underneath this controller, there's going to be a problem. You're going to get a really bad double transform. Now you will later on, and I'll show you how to fix that, but when it comes to bringing or putting the lattice underneath an animation control, you have to grab two parts that are connected here. And it's not blatant. It's not obvious. So let's go to show all. So what I need to grab is the lattice division control and the lattice drop off. Remember this guy we talked about before? The lattice drop-off allows you to control how much influence your lattice is going to have on the points that aren't being pulled on. See it right there? So we're going to grab this guy and grab this guy. Grab both. And we're going to shift select our animation control and hit P. We're going to hard parent it. We're going to grab our bone and grab our animation control and hit P. And then we're going to grab our main animation controller for the cluster shift select our animation control and hit P. So I, all I did was parent them all underneath this guy. But you'll notice when I start to move this around we get a double transform. That's not great. So what we need to do is to go in here and grab our cluster by himself and shift select our animation control and hit P. Now Maya might give you a little error like warning um, I'm trying to help you and what it's telling you is that it's still not going to calculate correctly if you're using with the default settings on the cluster you'll notice it's still giving me double transform now to fix that what you need to do is go into the cluster settings and I'm just working off default because it'd be easier for you guys to follow along I'm gonna grab that cluster go to my attributes for it or hit control a and turn relative on what that does it allows Maya to calculate this position and the other objects in the hierarchy all in 3D space and do it accurately. When I turn relative on, watch this. I grab my controller. I can move this around. We don't get double transform. And behold, I still have control of the cluster. Pretty cool, huh? It's a little secondary 
animation pretty sweet. So finally, with that all ready to go, I shift select my main controller, hit P, and now we have a sphere with a little bit of deformation. If we wanted to, we could add more deformations in there, but if we do, we gotta make sure we put it underneath our, our uh, animation control. And if you're using clusters and lattices, use my steps. If you're using any of the uh, non-linear ones, which are found here, such as a squash and stretch, you also want to parent them underneath your animation control. All right, that's about it for this video. A little bit short and sweet, but it gives you an idea of how you can add deformers to an object as well as something that's already skinned.